Well, from hacking websites to hacking spacecraft, the hacker group Anonymous has reportedly threatened to hack NASA's Mars rover Curiosity. Curiosity now on the red planet trying to find out if conditions there ever allowed for life. But many groups believe the hacking threat is fake. This after Anonymous vows to shut down Trapwire, a massive global surveillance network. To talk more about the latest in the hacktivist world, RT Web producer Andrew Blake joins us now. Hi, Andrew. Hey, Liz. What's so could hacktivists really hack into a spacecraft on Mars? I mean, anyone can do anything. I mean, if you reverse engineer anything you know like if you have the technology to put it there you have the technology to take it down it's it's that simple we can essentially do anything i don't see why not but the the, the way and the reason this all started developing was um back around a week or two ago someone at uh, pc mag um uh, the online edition they wrote that oh if you really wanted to hack uh curiosity out of curiosity this is how you would do it and they kind of um pinpointed step by step well if you know you can get 300, if you can send a signal at 400,000 kilowatts to 350 miles away, and you know how to do this. I mean, essentially rocket science, because that's you know really what it is. Um, so they published this saying that well, if you really have all of the means to take down this billion-dollar craft, you probably already know how to do it. But they, they laid it out for everyone, and um, uh, allegedly someone with this uh, security consulting firm called Flashpoint caught uh, just in a regular anonymous person uh, in a chat room talking about it and kind of sent out an APB saying, uh-oh, um, hackers are going to do it. They're going to do it. It's out there and it's going to happen, and which is pretty much just unfounded. They're just reported on you know, a paragraph that someone typed in a chat room about like, oh, hey, hey, hey let's, 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 let's hack okay, the rover. Okay, so these rumors of Anonymous actually doing the hacking, you're not buying into that? No, no, not at all. I mean, if we know that there's the possibility that someone would be able to do it, but there's possibility that, you know, someone would do anything. I could easily just flip over this, well, maybe not easily, but I could flip over this table all right, right now. we don't want you to maybe. do that. No, uh, no, no, no. But so, yeah, to, to say that someone could do it, absolutely, why not? And someone explained how. It just takes the kind of resources and money and know-how that you would really have to have like, right. a state It's not agency. like anybody can just hack into the Mars rover. No. Not just your run-of-the-mill schmuck. No, this like, was, you if you ask to... me, this was kind of just like another attempt to label anyone that's being considered a, a hacker, not even just a hacktivist, but just anyone is, you know, just another terrorist of the country who is has this crazy ability to do anything that they want, and they're going to use it to take down the space program. So You, that's you know, I stupid. mean, traditionally, uh, when we, ha Anonymous usually has some kind of a motive in terms of which, who they plan to attack. Be exactly. It a government agency or, or somebody basically piss them off. Yeah, and but there's really no reason to take down NASA. What incentive is there no. for Anonymous to, to hack the rover there, there isn't if you ask me I mean I don't speak on behalf of anyone other than myself but when you go out there and look at the facts why would this loose-knit international collective of hacktivists go oh man we hate science let's ruin science that doesn't make any sense so like I said the technology is there the know-how is there but to, to say that this endeavor is actually likely, I think, is absolutely ridiculous and kind of just fear-mongering on the part of the mainstream media who wants the world to be weary of uh, hackers and activists. And, I mean, it might very well be just another ploy in this whole step to trying to introduce uh, cybersecurity legislation because they're worried that people are going to get insider information and actually actually take this into their own hands. All right, all right. I um, want to move on because there's something else I want to talk about. Speaking of hacking and cybersecurity, something you have been keeping a close eye on, Trapwire. What is the latest on that front? Uh, it's, it's a good question. A lot of people still don't know about Trapwire, and that's kind of... Uh, almost as terrifying as Trapwire itself. For, for, for those watching at home who, who don't know about it, it's been uh, seven or eight days now since we discovered um, by going through emails allegedly obtained by uh, anonymous hackers that there is a global surveillance system that was licensed to the White House, to Canadian authorities, to Scotland Yard, to to local law enforcement excuse me, law enforcement agencies across the country. And this trap wire surveillance system uses state of the art technology and aggregates it with publicly available data and can kind of track anyone, anywhere, at any time for any reason. Um, so that exists. Uh, according to these emails and according to publicly available information. And it's been eight days now, and no one really seems 
too scared. Um, but well, it uh, sounds scary. Yeah, it, it does sound scary. But luckily, I shouldn't say no one sounds too scared because there is a campaign right now to uh, revolt against this whole thing. Um, a lot of hacktivists have taken to the web and kind of put out a call for arms to say that this trap wire thing, this thing that no one is reporting on, seems kind of scary. We should do something about it. So, in uh, for instance, right here in Washington, D.C., um, documents that we found through these um, emails that were hacked from uh, Strategic Forecasting, or Stratford, they were then distributed to WikiLeaks, who published them recently. And if you go through there, we can see that the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C., they bought into this trap wire program, which means that the D.C. surveillance cameras can use this face recognition software and can use this, um, these data mines to find anyone deemed suspicious and, uh, you know, profile them. And um, they're saying, you know, there's these cameras everywhere in places like D.C., New York, L.A., Chicago, London, all across Canada, across Texas. Um, what are we going to do about all these cameras? If we don't know that much about the system, is there something that we can do? So uh, right now there is an active campaign on the Internet to go out there and find these cameras and to render them useless. Uh, I'm not encouraging anyone to do that. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. I don't think I can say that. Um, but uh, there is an active campaign. People and actually, Anonymous is calling for this, correct? Well, let's let's say um, let's say of members of Anonymous, okay. because you know, keep in mind we're talking about this huge international global entity made up of anonymous persons. So, people who say that they are involved in the hacktivist collective Anonymous are calling for a campaign. And actually, they're saying, uh, starting this Saturday, tomorrow actually, they want people to go out there and they're calling it a splash cam Saturday because a lot of these surveillance cameras, um, you know, if this technology is correct, they can use it to find out exactly who you are just by picking up a glance of you, uh, you know, walking by. However, they also have a very substantial weakness, and that's if you put any sort of um, lubricant or viscous liquid on the lens, it, you're essentially ruining it. So um, if you want to go out there and spray silly string at these cameras or throw a water balloon at them or maybe just put a box over them, um, you're shutting down one node of a system, at least temporarily, that is connected to this huge international global surveillance system. How do you know system. which cameras are connected to the whole trap wire Me? system, which uh, is massive? Yes, uh, I, I, I don't. And a lot of people are still trying to figure that out. What we know, based off of the emails that were allegedly uh, taken from the Stratford servers, is that places like Washington, D.C. and uh, New York uh, Police Department and New Jersey Transit all, at least one time or another, according to these emails, had contracts with trap wire. Um, and we know that, like, right here in D.C., the D.C. Police Department, their cameras are linked to hundreds, if not thousands, of private businesses. They're also linked to the Department of Transportation. They're also linked to thousands of cameras in the public schools. So all of those cameras, you know, keep in mind, this isn't a technology on the camera end. This is a huge global system. It's all being sent into one place, then it's being sent to others. And so people are saying, just be suspicious, and if you feel like taking out a camera or two this weekend, why the hell not? <laughs> All right. Um, sounds scary. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out this weekend. Uh, Andrew, pleasure to have you in the studio. That Pleasure's was RT Web producer, Andrew Blake. Thanks.